I was looking for something new and something unique and I found this pattern for this display and it will be to make the this candle holder this angel shaped candle holder that holds a tea light candle. Step by step I'll show you how to make it in this video. I recently used the last of my battery tea light candles so I bought some to have them on hand when I needed them. Then I found this pattern for angel tea light candle holders and thought they would make a great easy project. At first glance the angels look the same but if you take a closer look each of them has wings shaped differently. I decided to make two sets of these. Maple would have been a good choice for this project, but I didn't have any left in stock that was wide enough. <laughs> I'm overdue for a trip to my local hardwood dealer. So I decided to use poplar and paint it white. The plan calls for quarter inch thick material for all the parts. I resawed some four quarter poplar, then ran it through my thickness planer to produce a smooth top and bottom on the quarter inch stock. I employed my favorite method of attaching patterns to wood, scroll saw tape. This avoids the use of messy spray adhesive and it peels off easily when you're done cutting. You'll see that in a little while. You roll on the tape, cut it to width, and then peel off the backing. Now you can press your patterns into place on the back of the double-sided tape and you're ready to start cutting on the scroll saw. The angels and two-part stand are all cut from the quarter-inch poplar. I determined the correct blade size to use for each project based on the thickness of the wood, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern I'll be cutting. This wood is thin, not very hard, and the pattern is not complex, so I decided to use a number 3 Pegasus Modified Geometry Blade. I made the interior cut first. I threaded the blade through the pilot hole, and then I tightened the upper blade holder. From the pilot hole I cut to the closest corner and then I eased off pressure on the blade and swiveled the workpiece 90 degrees to cut the corner. Then it was simply a matter of following the line and making the other corners in the same manner. With the interior cut completed I removed the blade and then tightened it back in the upper blade holder to prepare for the exterior cut. I can see that cutting this set of angels will go quickly. A tab on the bottom of each angel will fit into a slot on the base. The fit needs to be tight for this joinery method to work, so I'll cut the tab carefully. I started at the bottom and cut along one of the sides of the tab until I reached the intersection, and then I backed the tab out of the cut and did the same thing on the other side of the tab. I cut right on the line rather than on the inside or outside of the line. This should make the width exactly right to fit in the slot. Next, I went to the outside and cut, again exactly on the line, until I reached the point where the vertical cut ended. This ensures an accurate 90 degree corner that will mate perfectly with the slot in the base. I could make these corners by cutting from the outside and swiveling the workpiece when I reach the intersection, but sometimes the corner mate that way is slightly rounded rather than sharp. This results in a sloppy fit between the tab and slot. I'm finding the outside cut on the angel to be routine and uneventful. The first part that requires much concentration is the angel's wing because cutting those semicircles involves rapid changes of direction. I followed the line to the first scallop, then briefly hesitated at the intersection where the direction changed. I backed off pressure on the blade slightly, swiveled the workpiece to the new cutting direction, and then started cutting again. These shapes are close together, so it's only a matter of seconds before I come to the next intersection and I have to perform the same maneuver again. Cutting from the top of the wings to the top of the angel's head was a matter of following a simple curve. Then there was a very sharp turn where the halo met the angel's head, and then the cut down the right side was a mirror image of the cuts on the left side. I completed the outside cut, peeled off the pattern and scroll saw tape, and then took a quick look at the first completed angel. The stand consists of two circles. The larger of the two has a slot cut into it to insert the tab on the bottom of the angel. Then the smaller circle is glued to the bottom of the larger. Both circles are cut from quarter inch material. I started with the interior cutout by cutting from the pilot hole to one of the corners. I cut right on the lines for the slot using the usual technique for 90 degree corners. Whenever I reach a corner, I cut to the intersection, back off slightly on the blade, swivel the workpiece 90 degrees, then start cutting again. Once the cut was made to create the slot, it was time for a moment of truth, the test fit. 
The slot was long enough, but not wide enough to accept the tab. But that's better than being too wide with a sloppy fit. You can always go back and make a cut bigger, but there's no way to make it smaller. I turned to my work surface next to the scroll saw, picked up a ruler and pencil, and then drew a new line on one side of the slot. It would make the slot a tiny bit wider, not much more than the width of a scroll saw blade. The second test fit showed that the tab was too long for the slot. I had two choices regarding how to make the correction. I could make the slot longer or make the tab smaller. I chose the latter since making a tiny cut on each side of the tab is easier. With this small number 3 blade, I know I can make a cut not much wider than the thickness of the blade on each side of the tab. The reason I'm cutting on each side, rather than making a larger cut on one side, is to keep the angel centered on the base. I did a third test fit and found the length of the tab was now fine, but the tab was still slightly thick for the width of the slot. I went back, made one more correction, and the last test fit showed the tab was now a little loose in the slot. This demonstrates why slot and tab joints are not my favorite, but it was needed here to give strength. The last two cutting steps were the exteriors of the large and small circles. These cuts did not take long. As I was cutting the second angel, I adjusted the width of the tab to hopefully get a better fit the first time. I made the vertical cuts for the tab on the inside of the line rather than directly on the line like it did for the first angel. This will make the tab slightly smaller than the tab was on the first angel. There was nothing new to show while cutting the second angel or circular base. The correction turned out to be a good choice and the fit was smooth, not too loose, and not too tight. The glue up for the angels is very easy. I used a glue bottle with a small tip to apply a bead of glue to the surfaces that would be touching the base, then slip the tab into the slot. I'll set this aside for the glue to dry, and then I'll come back in a while to glue this small circle to the bottom of the larger circle. I guess its purpose is to lift the base up off whatever surface the angel is sitting on to make the angel look like it's floating in the air. After the glue is dry, I'll take these to my paint booth and spray them white. I thought about painting the base a different color, but couldn't think of a combination that I liked, so I decided to stick with white for the whole display. If you remember, there were three different angel patterns. I cut one of each, but while I was removing them from my paint booth, I dropped one and it broke. I didn't have any more quarter-inch pop where that was wide enough to make any more of these. I'll have to resaw some more as soon as I have the opportunity. When I added the tea lights, I made a discovery. The opening for the tea lights is not quite wide enough, and I had to wedge them in slightly. I'll make the next batch with a wider opening. I appreciate and respond to every comment, so please let me know what you think about this project and video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time I release a new video. And if you're in the mood for more woodworking right now, a suggested video to watch is on your screen. Enjoy!